Okay, today our lesson is on special functions. So chapter two, lesson six. And we've got our content standards with functions and we're graphing square roots, piecewise defined functions, step functions, and absolute value functions. So previously we've modeled data using lines of regression and today we're going to write and graph piecewise defined functions and we're going to write and graph step and absolute value functions. A, a little bit of new vocabulary, piecewise defined function, piecewise linear function, a step function, greatest integer function, and absolute value function. Okay, some things we need to know. A function that is written using, using two or more expressions, which this is what this looks like, is called a piecewise defined function. Now on the graph of a piecewise defined function, a dot indicates the point is included in the graph, just like when we're graphing an inequality, and a circle, or the open circle, indicates that the point is not included in the graph. So first of all, let's look at this. We're to graph f of x, we are given um, two different expressions. Um, we're going to use x minus 1 if whatever we substitute in for x is less than or equal to 3. And we're going to use negative 1 if x is greater than 3. So let's uh, see what that looks like so we can graph this function. We're told to graph the linear function f of x is equal to x minus 1 for x is less than or equal to 3. So what you can do here is substitute a 3 in for x, 3 because that's what we're given here. 3 minus 1 is 2. So our uh, ordered pair is going to be 3, 2. Now since it's, this inequality contains the or equal, it's going to be a closed circle. So at 3, 2 we have a closed circle and we're told it's less than or equal to 3. We can pick other points. If you put a 1 in there, 1 is less than 3, so 1 minus 1 is 0. So we'd graph 1, 0. So we could do a table of values in order to figure out where to finish graphing this equation. Now we're going to graph the constant function f of x is equal to negative 1 for x is greater than 3. So it's always a negative 1, but notice it doesn't have the or equal to. So that's greater than, so it's going to go to the right, but it's an open circle. So the function is defined for all values of x. So, and that, that is because notice that even though that's an open circle, up here it picks up again and it's closed. So all values of x, so the domain is all real numbers, and the y-coordinates on the graph are all real numbers less than or equal to 2. So notice the highest up this graph goes is 2, so that's why it is written f of x such that f of x is less than or equal to, notice it's closed circles, or, or equal to a 2. So that is the range. So let's check your progress. Why don't you pause for a moment and work this one out. Remember, we're going to substitute the negative 1 in for x. That's a good place to start. Or you can just go ahead and do a table of values. Any value that's less than neg or greater than negative 1, you're going to use this expression. And for any values that are less than or equal to negative 1, you'll use this one. Okay, when I substitute negative 1 in for x here, I get 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2, plus 1, so I get a negative 1. So I'm going to graph this at negative 1, negative 1. This doesn't have an or equal to, so it's an open circle, and it's going to go greater than. And for this one, uh, negative 1, negative 3, because this is a constant function, and it's less than or equal to, so we'll have a closed circle at the negative 1, open circle at the greater than. So the domain is all real numbers. This closed circle takes care of that open circle. And the range is y such that y is greater than negative 1 or y is equal to negative 3. So if you need to pause for a moment and study that. 
So notice here's the negative 3. It's equal to negative 3 and it's there's the negative 1 and y is greater than negative 1. Very good. Ooh, now we get to write a piecewise defined function. Uh, piecewise defined functions are often defined by several linear functions. So first of all, let's see. Examine and write a function for each portion of the graph. Okay, so we've got to write a function for this portion and for this portion. The left portion of the graph is a graph of f of x is equal to x minus 4. Um, we get that because if we look at where it crosses the y, it crosses the y at 1, 2, 3, negative 4, right? And then the slope is up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So that's why we know it's 1x minus 4. There is a circle at 2, negative 2, so the linear function is defined for x such that x is less than 2. Okay, so 2 is as large as x goes and it's defined for x is less than 2. Now the right portion of the graph is what's called a constant function. Whenever you see y is equal to 4 or x is equal to 2, whatever, you know that that is a constant function. It doesn't matter what the value of the other variable is, it's that you're going to have a straight line. The, so this is uh, f of x is equal to 1. Okay, so notice we go up 1 and it starts at a dot at 2, 1. So the constant function is defined for x such that x is greater than or equal to 2. So you can pause the video for a little bit and go back and look at that slowly, making sure you're understanding. Write the piecewise defined function. So our answer is that f of x is equal to x minus 4 if x is less than 2, and it's 1 if x is greater than 2, greater than or equal to 2. Time to check your progress. So identify the piecewise defined function shown in the graph. So pause the video, study the graph and your different possible solutions, and then come back and we'll check your answer. Well, if I'm looking at this, notice x is negative 4. Okay. Well, here we got a positive 4. So that's thrown out. Positive 4. It's not greater than positive 4. Not greater than 4. Greater than or equal to negative 4. This is at 7. So it's 7 if it's greater than negative 4. So it has to be D. Okay, the graphs of different parts of a piecewise defined function may or may not connect. Now a graph may also stop at a given x value and then begin at a different y value for the same value of x. Let's look and see what we're talking about. We're going to use a step function. So pause for a moment and read the problem. Okay, so this psychologist charges for counseling sessions at the rate of $85 per hour or any fraction thereof. That's important. Draw a graph that represents this situation. So the cho total charge must be a multiple of $85, right? So the graph will be a graph of a step function. If the session is greater than zero hours but less than or equal to one hour, the cost is $85 because she charges for fractions of time. If the time is greater than one hour but less than two, less than or equal to two hours, then the cost is 170. Notice it's 85 times two, and so on. So we're going to use the patterns of times and cost to make a table where x is the number of hours of the session and c of x is the total cost. Then you're going to draw the graph. So if it's between zero and one, it's 85. Between one hour and two hours, 170, and so on. So if it's zero hours to one hour, they're going to pay $85. Then not including one hour, but any portion greater than one hour to two hours, 170. So that's why this one's open, but this one's closed. 
Since the psychologist rounds any fraction of an hour up to the next whole number, each segment on the graph has a circle at the left endpoint and a dot at the right endpoint. Okay, time to check your progress. So pause for a little bit and study the graphs and see which one will fit best. Okay, so daily grind charge is $1.25 per pound of meat, and here's that, or any fraction thereof. Draw a graph that represents this situation. So we know we're talking about a step function, so we throw this one out. Hmm, 0 to 1. Well, that doesn't sound right. They pay $1.25 per pound for meat. So if they're buying one pound, that'd be $1.25, so that one's out. So now we're just looking at this one. Is it going to start with an open to a closed or closed to an open? Because it's, it's charging $1.25 per or any fraction thereof, it's open to closed. So good job. Unlike a piecewise defined function, a piecewise linear function contains a single expression. A common piecewise linear function is the step function. The graph of a step, step function consists of line segments. So this is a step function with these line segments. Okay, let's look at this key concept about absolute value function. Notice absolute value is in the shape of a V. So we are to graph y is equal to the absolute value of x plus 1 and identify the domain and the range. So first of all, we create a table of values. So if x is negative 3, y would be 4, and so on. Then all we have to do is graph the points and connect them. When we, when we know we've got an absolute value in the equation, if it's not the shape of a v, we've done our math wrong. So looking at the domain, there's no limitations on x, so it's all real numbers, and the range is y such that y is greater than or equal to 1. Notice it goes up to 1 and then up from there. So identify the functions shown by this graph. Very good. What I went did is I went through and um, I started with a zero. I put a zero in all these places. And um, for A, I came up with zero, one. Well, zero, one is not on there, so I threw A out. Uh, for C, I also got the ordered pair zero, one. So now I was just looking at B or D as far as coming up which one would work. So I substituted a one. I knew I was looking for 1, negative 1, and um, D, when I did it, gave me 1, 1, but B gave me 1, negative 1. So the answer is B. Very good. Um, one thing we need to talk about a little bit is the greatest integer function. So if you would uh, take a quick look on page 102 of your textbook, where it talks about the greatest integer function, I would like for you to have just a quick read about that, and then you're ready to work your examples.